Hi, I'm excited to welcome you all to my first ever episode of Curiosity, a show that sums up breakthroughs in the world of science every single week. Mind that it's not just pure science, I'm also going to include developments in the fields of humanities and social sciences, so stay tuned. So what are the sources of this curiosity? Many indeed. I've been a regular subscriber for three podcasts, The Naked Scientist from the Cambridge University and Wellcome Trust, Science Friday from NPR and Freakonomics. In addition, I read news section of AAAS Science and Nature regularly, plus many great science subreddits in Reddit. This show will also include opportunities for students and researchers, for example, any noteworthy calls or internship or grants and so on. Even exciting pieces of softwares and apps, so stay tuned. In case you come across any path-breaking development that you would like to feature in this curiosity, you can do it via form. Link is given in the description section of this video. Please have a look. So why am I doing this? You might be wondering, maybe altruism, you know, the helping spirit of others is behind this cause. Not exactly. The reason is a promise to myself to stay updated, you see. So I'm just sharing whatever I learned with the world through this YouTube channel. Let me quote Albert Einstein once again, a quote that I have featured many times in previous episodes of this channel. Once you stop learning, you start dying. So updating with what is happening in the world of science is very important, friends. Curiosity gets released every weekend. Each episode is typically 15 minutes, so stay tuned and update yourself. Please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking the subscribe icon to get the updates. By the way, I'm a member of National Academy in India called INIAS, that is Indian National Young Academy of Sciences. Ever heard INIAS? It's a great academy for young scientists, I tell you. You can apply to become a member, the link is given in the description section of this video. The curiosity is indeed part of the science outreach activities that I'm doing under INIAS. So let's begin the first ever episode of Curiosity. I invite you to reflect upon 10 latest developments in the field of scientific research happens last week. That is week number 17 of 2020. The first two stories are the two most important developments towards fighting COVID-19. A biotech company from China, Sinovac Biotech develops a vaccine against SARS-CoV-2, the novel coronavirus. The vaccines they developed is an old style, meaning these are attenuator or inactivated virus particles like oral polio vaccine. They tested it in monkeys, the rhesus macaques. Out of 8 monkeys, 4 got low doses while the rest 4 got higher doses. After 3 weeks, the scientists deliberately introduced the coronavirus into the lungs of these monkeys through tracheal tubes, you see, in the hospitals. Well, a cruel form of animal research. But the good news is that none of these monkeys developed COVID-19. The firm is now testing this vaccine with volunteers from Pakistan. Yet another groundbreaking vaccine against COV-2 is by a group from Jenner Institute, Oxford University in Britain. You see the name Jenner is after Edward Jenner, the discoverer of the vaccine, the British man. Their style of vaccine development is new school, the top-notch genetic engineering tools. The vaccine has a very fancy name, Chadox-1 and COV-19. It's a recombinant viral vector vaccine. That means they cut certain genes from the virus and stitch into the bacterial genome. Now the bacteria start using these genes to make the viral proteins. Well, don't worry about these proteins. These don't cause any infections. Good news is that these proteins tell our immune system to produce antibodies against the COVID-19. So we get immunized against the future attacks by the coronavirus. A US group from National Institute of Health in Montana tested Oxford vaccine in six rhesus monkeys just like their Chinese counterpart in the trials conducted recently and found to be 100% effective. It's actually a very good news for the rest of the world. Now that Oxford team has signed a deal with Swedish pharma giant called AstraZeneca for large-scale manufacturing of their vaccine. The vaccine has got green signal from UK's NHS, the National Health Services, to test in 6,000 volunteers. The trials are now on the way. By the way, both British as well as Chinese team tested their vaccines in monkeys. Wonder why? As you know, rhesus monkeys are primates, animals closest to the humans in evolution. If it works in monkeys, probabilities are quite high that it might work in humans as well. 
So after first, second, the third story of the week is again about COVID-19. You might have heard that many people who get this disease lose their ability to smell and taste. The latest study published in JAMA, that is J-A-M-A, -A, the journal, by an Italian team surveyed 202 Italians who recovered from COVID-19 and concluded that 60% of the patients lost their olfactory sensation. The study also found that females are more susceptible for changes in their sense of smell or taste, 72% of women versus 56% of men. Perhaps the study indicates a scary reality that the coronavirus might cause long-term impacts on our nervous system. Let's wait for more studies in this regard. The fourth study is about aging. Perhaps you have heard of chromosomes, haven't you? We have 23 pairs of them in each of our cells. Chromosomes are like shoelaces. A very good analogy. I love analogies and metaphors I use often in my class. As you can see, shoelaces have small plastic caps in the end. It even has a name in English language, aglet. Just like shoelaces, chromosomes have caps in their end too, the so-called telomeres. One of the most prominent physiological change when we age is the end of the chromosome starts shrinking. These telomeres start shrinking. Like the laces with damaged aglets become useless, chromosomes too start disintegrating once the telomeres start damaging. If we can prevent these telomeres from shortening, we can control the aging to a certain extent. To ensure the telomeres are healthy, we need a crucial enzyme called telomerase. If something happens to telomerase, telomeres start disintegrating. That is what is happening during aging. New study by a team from Harvard University led by Neha Nagpal, she is an Indian origin scientist and working in Harvard, got published this week in the journal Cell Stem Cell. The team identified very small molecule called PAD5 inhibitors that restores the telomerase activity. I'm not going to the technicalities of these molecules but it's good news for everyone who wish to slow down aging and reduce these, you know, the grey hairs. The fifth story is from arts, creative writing. A team from UK's Durham University and British newspaper Guardian surveyed 181 professional British writers who participated in Edinburgh International Book Festival and they found that the majority of authors hear, you know, the characters speak in their minds. Hearing the inner speech or voices is not new. For example, see famous American novelist Alice Walker's statement she made in 1983. Just as summer was ending, one more of my characters, Silly, Shug, Albert, Sophia or Harpo would come for a visit. We would sit wherever I was and talk. They were very obliging, engaging and jolly. They were, of course, at the end of their story but were telling it to me from the beginning. Things that made me sad often made them laugh. Oh, we got through that. Don't pull such a long face, they would say. The merit of this study is that they statistically analyze this experience and they come with a number. 63% of the professional authors have experienced this inner voice. They did a chi-square test and concluded the following statement. Writers who experienced their characters' voices were significantly likely to also experience their characters visually. Again, I'm not going to minutiate technicalities, you see, but the study is definitely interesting and reveals cognitive patterns common among writers in general. The sixth study is about depression in men. As you might know, men are far more prone to depression than women and science had no answers till date. Two landmark publications published in the Journal of Psychology of Men and Masculinities by a team from the Kansas University in the US provided an answer to this decades-old conundrum. What they found is that men view traditional symptoms of depression such as crying and social isolation as more feminine traits and they are stigmatized to reveal to the world, for example, get a professional help, which leads to internal conflict and silent suffering. On the other hand, non-traditional symptoms like anger or alcoholism is viewed as more masculine and less severe, so men don't realize that they are depressed. The bottom line of both these studies is that social stigma contributes a large extent in depressed men avoiding professional help, so it's time to break that gender stereotyping. Seventh story of the week is about Sahara Desert. 
By the way, do you know Antarctica, the white desert was full of pine trees around 290 million years ago in Permian period? This is one of my favorite book by Stephen J. Gould called Wonderful Life, beautifully illustrating life during Cambrian explosion at Burgess Shale in Canada. The new paper published last week by a team from University of Chicago in the journal Zoo Keys revealed the most dangerous place on the planet Earth's history. Any guesses? It was a present day Sahara desert friends. Turn back 100 million years. If you happen to visit Sahara then you will be welcomed by ferocious predators including flying reptiles and crocodile like hunters. A terrifying scene indeed. Yes, paleontology is an exciting field with full of curiosity friends. Before 8th story, let me have a sip of water. Well, guess what? 8th story is about water. A new study that involved 1000 senior citizens published last week in Psychology and Aging by a British team concluded that higher dehydration was linked to higher cognitive declining in older adults, you see. The finding is significant because incontinence is common among senior adults. So in an effort to limit their excursions to the restroom, they end up not drinking enough water. Small bladders, incontinence, not wanting to get up in the middle of the night or anxiety that there won't be any restroom available when they need or just some reasons they prefer not to be hydrated. If you have senior citizens at home, please advise them to drink more water even if it increases their visits to the loo. From senior citizens, let's go to juniors in our ninth story of the week. A study published last week in the journal Attachment and Human Behavior by a US team concluded that children who have difficult relationship with their mothers are clingy towards their early teachers. While the study did not explicitly state, I would argue that it also highlights why mothers play crucial roles in the developments of their children. Having a difficult relationship with their children at home makes them more vulnerable elsewhere. For example, those predators, child molesters, you see. Finally, here comes our 10th story of the week. Scientists from NCBS Bangalore here in India have discovered a new species of pit viper snakes from Arunachal Pradesh and published their findings in Zoo Systematics and Evolution last week. Some of you might have read Harry Potter, right? The surrealistic world of magic, witchcraft and wizardry. One of the fictional characters in Harry Potter is Salazar Slytherin. He was a founder of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry and he has the ability to talk with snakes. Now what is the connection? Authors from the NCBS were so ingenuous to name their snake after Salazar Slytherin. The name for this newly discovered species of snake is Trimeresurus Salazar. For sure, authors from the NCBS were Harry Potter fans. By the way, usually most of the taxonomists, the convention is that they name the species after their, you know, friends or boss, a form of appeasing them, you see, the quid pro quo or bribing them, getting their favors in back. But Zishan A. Ayaz Mirza, you know, the first author of this paper from NCBS was different kind of taxonomist, a taxonomist with creative spark. I love that. Well, wondering how do I get access to full PDF texts of these linked up literature? I use a Chrome extension Unpaywall, a fully legal tool to find full text and is amazing, I tell you. First, let's search in the Google for Unpaywall Chrome and click on the first link. So this is a, an extension of the Chrome Web Store on Paywall. So as I have this extension already installed in my Chrome, it's asking me to remove it from the Chrome. If you don't have it, then this will ask you to install it first. So please install this software. This is nothing but an extension. So if you install it as this image says, you're going to see an icon on the right side of uh, your screen uh, whenever you are in a publisher's website. For example, let us go to this side. We are in the journal site of Springer and the journal is basically environmental science and pollution research which is not an open access journal. So this article, otherwise if I don't have that extension I couldn't access it. So because I have that extension I can see that there is an icon here and this icon is basically a green color with the you know unlocked image in it. I just have to click this icon so that 
the PDF will be automatically downloaded directly into my computer because I have disabled the Chrome's PDF viewer. I don't like to view my PDF inside the Chrome. So this is a very handy software, you know, and this is completely legal because this software is looking for archived copies of these authors put up in their own websites or elsewhere and this is totally legal one and uh, it, this one works even if the journal is non open access and articles are not free also you can see this icon slide up most of the time it works but there are exceptions like this paper I couldn't find it you know even this the add-ons couldn't find it the free version of it so there are, of course there are exceptions but most of the time in my experience this add-on works fantastically I highly recommend this add-on in case you work with uh, scholarly literature because it actually shows you where to get this article free of charge now comes opportunities section of the curiosity Fulbright Nehru Academic and Professional Excellent Fellowship Call is open now. Last date is 15th June. Fulbright Nehru Doctoral Research Fellowship for Pursuing PhD in the US is also open right now. Deadline is 15th July. If you are working on COVID-19, then you might be interested to apply for Indo-US Virtual Networks for COVID-19. Last date is 15th May. Indo-Korea Bilateral Research Grant Call is open now, closing on 29th May. EMBO Global Investigators Network Call is open, last date is 3rd June. So as ICGB Grants, last date is 15th May. Please look description section of this video for the links. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get updated when the next episode of Curiosity is out. Hope this video has been useful to you. If you like this video, please click like button, share it in relevant groups and subscribe to this channel. I wish you a week full of curiosity. See you next week. Sayonara.